In this video, we're going to continue our work with D1 and look at implementing an algorithm given a flowchart. In the question, it says, note, this question uses the modulus function. If x is not equal to y, the modulus of x minus y is the positive difference between x and y, e.g. the modulus of 5 minus 6.1 is equal to 1.1. All this is doing is giving us the absolute value, so it's saying the distance between these two numbers. If we do 5 minus 6.1, it's minus 1.1, but we're just looking at the absolute value, which is 1.1. We're told the algorithm described by the flowchart below is to be applied to the five pieces of data below. U1 is 6.1, U2 is 6.9, U3 is 5.7, U4 is 4.8, and U5 is 5.3. In part A, we're asked to obtain the final output of the algorithm using the five values given for U1 to U5, and in part b, in general, for any set of values u1 to u5, explain what the algorithm achieves. So let's look at our flowchart. We've got a start, and we can see the rounded edges to the rectangle, and we've got a stop. And again, we have the rounded edges to the rectangle. So with our start and stop, we will always have those. We can see that we've got rectangles and diamonds. Rectangles give us instructions. Diamonds now ask us to make a decision. So if you want to remember it, decision diamonds, D, D. That's what we're being asked to do. And this is a straightforward instruction. What I'm going to do in my first column here is write now box. So I'm going to write down the box. Let's look at box number one. This is an instruction. So I'm told to let I be equal to one. So I need a column for I, and we know in box one that I will be one. We're now told that A is equal to U1. So I need a column for A, and we can put in that this is going to be equal to u1. u1 is 6.1. So all I'm doing is filling out information. We've now got temp. So I need a column for temp, and I'll write this in here. We've got temp. Temp is the modulus of 5 minus u1. Now, u1 is for 6.1, so it's 5 minus the 6.1, and we take the modulus of it. They've actually done the first one for us, so we can write in that this is 1.1. If you do 5 minus 6.1, you get minus 1.1. But again, we're taking the absolute value. So just the numeric value of minus 1.1. So we've done box 1. We now move on to box 2, and we follow the instruction. We're told to let i be equal to i plus 1. Well, i is 1. If I add 1 to that, I'm going to end up now with 2. So we've done box number 2. We now move on to box number three. It says here, let m be equal to the modulus of five minus ui. So what I need is a column with m. So there is m. If we look now, i is two. So if we take u2, which is 6.9, that will correspond to this value here. So we need to do five minus u2, so five minus 6.9, and then take the absolute value, or the modulus. So all I'm going to do is write in here that that is going to be 1.9. That is the absolute value. We now move on to box 4, and we're asked to make a decision. Is m less than temp? So what I'm going to have is another column. Is m less than temp? Well, if we look at this here, m is 1.9, temp is 1.1. Uh, so I'm going to put in here no. I've put in no, therefore what we need to do is follow this route round, and that takes me to box 6, instead of going to box 5, which is yes. So what I'm now going to do is put in here box 6. And when we come round to box 6, we have another decision to make, and that is now, is i less than 5? Well, if we look now, i currently is 2. So yes, this is less than 5. So we're at box 6. We said now that i is less than 5, so we now follow yes. We come back up and we find ourselves back at box 2. So all I'm doing with my boxes here is keeping track of what I'm doing. So in box 2, I'm told to let i be equal to i plus 1. So I've got 2, 2 plus 1 gives me 3. That's the only instruction I've got in this box. So I move on to box number three. It says now, let m be equal to five minus ui. Now this time, i is three, u3 is 5.7. So 
So what we need to do is find m and we need to do the modulus of 5 minus 5.7 and that's going to be now 0 0.7. So in box 3 I'm going to now take that instruction and then find m and put 0 0.7. So we now come down to box four. I've done box three. Is m less than temp? Well, let's have a look now. We've got m just here, and we're being asked now, is this going to be less than our value of the temporary? And the answer now is going to be yes, because m is 0 0.7 and temp is going to be 1.1. So in this box, I'm now going to write yes. This time, I need to go to box five instead of box six. So writing this in here, I'm going to write down box five. Now, it says here, A is equal to UI. So what we need to do is write in A is equal to UI. I is three at the moment. So what I'm going to take is U3, which is going to be 5.7. So straight off, I just put in here 5.7. And we're told to let temp be equal to to m. Temp is just here, we've got m just here, so this will be 0 0.7. So what we've now done is gone ahead and carried out the instructions in box 5. a is going to be u3, which is giving us for 5.7, and temp is m, m is 0 0.7. So all we do now is go on to box number 6. We have the decision to make, is i less than 5? Well, i is 3, so is i less than 5? The answer here is going to be yes. So I've chosen that it is, therefore I need to go back round to box number 2. So by writing these out, whilst it's slightly tedious, I am keeping on top of what I'm doing. So in box 2, we need to let i be equal to i plus 1. i is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So let's go down to box number 3. So we've done all the instructions in box 2. We let m be equal to the modulus of 5 minus ui. Well, ui is going to be 4. 5 minus 4.8 is 0 0.2. So in box number 3, we're going to put in here 0 0.2. So I've carried out now the instruction in box number 3. So we need to go on to make a decision in box number 4. So is m less than temp? Well, if we look now, what we have is m is 0 0.2 and we've got now the temp is 0 0.7. So m is less than temp. So we're going to write now that this answer is yes. So what we need to do here is move on to box number five. If I'd said no, I would have gone now to box number six. So if I now put box number five, I have to let a be equal to ui. Well, we're now up to u4. So what I'm going to have in here is 4.8. We've now got temp equal to m. So temp equal to m, 0 0.2. And then I simply move down to box 6. I'm asked to make the decision, is i less than 5? The answer is yes. So I write in here, yes, it's less than 5. And now that I've stated that it's less than 5, instead of going downwards, I go back again to box number 2. So let's go for box number two. i is equal to i plus one. Well, we have four plus one, which is five. That's box number two done. Box number three, this is another instruction. m is equal to five minus u, and then we've got i, and we take the modulus of that. So it's five minus 5.3, and we need to take the modulus of that. So that's going to be 0 0.3, and we just put in here 0 0.3. OK, so we've done box three. We now go to box four and we have the decision to make. We're asked now, is m, which is this value here, less than temp? The answer now is going to be no. So what I'm going to do is write in here now, is this greater or if we want, is m less than temp? The answer is no. So that's in box number four. And then this time what I do is choose this route. We now come down to box number six and we're asked to make the decision. Is i strictly less than five? The answer is no. So we come to this column here and we write down no. So what I now need to do is go to box seven as I've chosen no or chosen no. And we end up now printing a. 
So all I'm going to do here is write now that I need to print A. If we consider now printing A, A is going to be 4.8, and I can write that just in here, and then at this point we are told to stop. So what I've done here now is completed part A. Obtain the final output of the algorithm using the five values given for U1 to U5. So I've done it systematically using this chart right here, or if you like, a trace table. We often call this a trace table, and I've gone through the algorithm. It's told me to stop, so I don't need to do anything more. Now in part B, it says in general for any set of values U1 to U5, explain what the algorithm achieves. Now if we look at this algorithm, it will find the number closest to 5, and that gives us our output of 4.8. So it will choose the number in this list that is closest to 5. In part C, it says if box 4 in the flowchart is altered to is m greater than temp, state what the algorithm now achieves. Now if we think about this, this is going to send us in a different direction and it will find the, num the number uh, the furthest away from 5. So this way round we'll find the number closest to 5 from this data list. If we swap it round it will find the number furthest away from 5. So all we've done here now is just implemented the algorithm step by step, worked our way through it and then considered the questions at the end. So this is a typical question when you're given an algorithm and you just have to carry it out. Step by step, take your time, sub in the values and then come to a stop.